not just for kids. And um, briefly, um, I think it was published in 1937. It's about three orphans who are adopted and um, their, their um, uh, person who loves them um, falls on hard times. And there were these schools in, in London who, which um, trained children to um, be, you know, uh, dancers and actors, and at the age of 12, they could get a license and they could work. And um, in this passage, um, Pauline, who's almost 12 and has had a success um, at school, is kind of um, bored and she learns a lesson from her French teacher. So I'm going to read just a, a passage about, about that. Um, Pauline usually had two French acting classes a week and found them quite enough for learning a part in French was not so easy to her as learning it in English. Madame Moulin uh, greeted her with a cheerful nod when she saw her. Ah, ma petite. <laughs> Next term I will have you play the little match girl in Hans Anderson. So I translated it myself. Uh, in holidays, but now, since I have you, uh, for five extra hours a week, I, I shall give it to you. You shall translate it for me. Pauline's mouth dropped open. She stared at Madame Moulin in horror. But that isn't acting. That's lessons. I hate translation. But it's good for you. Madame Moulin patted her shoulder. Miss J had thought it would be no, I'm using for you to watch the senior girls prepare for the Christmas plays, the extra rehearsals. She takes so they may please the producers, but she tells me no. No, Pauline ne s'amuse pas. She knows too much of the art of acting to be interested in training uh, for others. We must find her something difficult to do. It is bad for a child to be bored. She pulled out a chair, uh, pointed to, to the sheets of foolscap and a copy of Hans Andersen's fairy story. There you are, ma chère. You will not have time to be bored if you translate all this for a play. So Pauline had to sit down. Uh, and the words kept getting blurred. And then quite suddenly, from trying not to cry. A sob came out that was like a hiccup. And that started her. She could not stop. It seemed mean to her to be treated like this. The more she thought how mean it was, the more she cried. Madame Moulin said after a bit, why are you crying? Pauline brought out a long sentence, but none of it was distinguishable. It sounded like mean, hateful, mean, French, mean, why? No, not done anything. Mean, it's mean. It's not my fault I'm not 12. Madame Moulin looked out the window and thought a moment. When I was a young girl, I was a pupil at the Académie Française. I was a good pupil. I had great promise, just as you have great promise. I grew, as so many young girls grow, to think I had more than promise. One day, there came to the school a great, 
a very great actress. She was old. And one of her legs had been cut off. So she used one of wood. It, it shows that I had recently had much notice for my playing of Lig Long. Pauline was crying less because she was interested. Lig Long, that's an eagle, isn't it? Yes. A poor young boy, he was the Higret. And you shall read the story, and when you are 15, 16, you could play it. This actress, she was a very old woman, and she chose that role to act for her students. And imagine her old. Oh, a wooden leg, dressed in the height of fashion, to play a young boy. How silly, said Pauline. That is what I thought. Madame Boulin nodded. How foolish. I thought, oh, c'est formidable. That old woman, they glow, I. I, I am big long. I, I was young. But, um, I settled to watch, saying, well, we must be kind. But, oh, Pauline. The tears ran down my cheek. She, she was like low. She ceased to be ridiculous. She, her art was supreme. Oh, how, how we students clapped, how we called bees when we were dismissed. We passed her bowing, but when I drew near her, she caught my hand. It was as though she had read in my face how I had thought, for she said, N'oubliez pas juste qu'une actrice Continuer à prendre jusqu'à son dernier jour. Never forget that an actress can always learn until her last hour. I want to learn, Pauline said. It's because I wasn't learning that I didn't like it, and anyway, I never said so. Your face said it. You were angry. Why should you watch these girls? What did they to teach you? You, who had played Titan so well, you were in the mood I was in when I watched Lake Girl. Why should I watch? What could an old woman teach me? But you were watching a great actress. <laughs> it never matters who you watch, you can always learn. Always, always.
so proud about reading it at the uh, City Planning Commission. Oh, yeah, <laughs> where you take my name and my number. Yeah, right. I, this is all <laughs> her invention. I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> and everything. So go ahead. So, I cut um, Two Bridges Mega Towers proposal. Um, uh, the City Planning Council Commission is where they're going to build, they're going to try to build three buildings on the East River, mega towers, you know, above the Joshua Kushner Tower, you know, <laughs> near the uh, Manhattan Bridge. So, so the architects, you know, they don't want to have money, they're right, they're sitting, they're, they're jumping over the land, land, the land, the land commissioners, the Europe, Europe, urban legal, and, and, and these, these, these are the commissioners who uh, decide what gets in, what gets built in the city, right? And so these architects submit, propose to have three, men, but they don't have the money yet. And the commissioners the ones who give them money. So, so this is what I wrote. I grew up in the Rutgers housing projects until college. After college, I pursued an art career and participated in developing grassroots non-profit art centers in Lower East Side. There were seven lows, city arts, charas, basement workshop, Chinatown Food Co-op, New Eurekan Poets Cafe, ABC No Rio, A Gathering of the Tribes, Bowery Poetry Cafe, Asian Arts Alliance, and finally, the last studio, the last bastion, 12-hour per day drawing center, mm -hmm. Spring Street Studio in Soho. Woo! <laughs> Presently, Minerva's Drawing Studio, a.k.a. Spring Street Studio, a small business for artists, have been relocated to a smaller space on Broom Street in China, near Chinatown. The move was heartbreaking after 25 years in Soho from Minerva Durham, who nurtured over 1,000 New York area artists, plus 500 international artists, artists attending Spring Street Studio. After the move, Minerva suffered a stroke where she is handicapped and needs a crutch to mobilize. Now just last month, we celebrated her 80th yes. birthday and she is in the midst of fundraising while in her 80s. So I am her proxy and will speak out. I also am a displaced Lower East Side artist now, situated in Gowanus Superfund. All nonprofit arts organizations, especially the socio-economic murals by City Arts for social change of the 70s to 90s, have disappeared from Lower East Side. What remains are cold steel glass towers for the rich to replace poorer families. Unfortunately, as artists, we had envisioned a downtown free art in institute to thrive in a once diverse ethnic community. Now, we must address the impact of systemic racism and displacement caused by real estate developments. We are against mega towers that will environmentally impact and force the poor working class families out of their homes, small businesses, and be culturally deprived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. nice. So like the architect said, well, we're going to be diverse. <laughs> They don't we'll be moving in diverse people. Yeah, right. You're they take no this. prisoners. Don't worry. They take no prisoners. Yeah, right. That's very interesting. I told her she could say whatever she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we have 20 minutes to kill okay. people.
before oh. midnight. Or to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. We're not gonna kill anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not gonna kill anything. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're not in the rain on Times Square. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> not quite my pony view, but nice. Well, I, uh, it's okay. It's just, you know, any, yeah, any man. Any, any, any way that any way that can stop this development can happening. Stop the can't stop it. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Call the mayor. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, My dad will work. <laughs> no. Yeah, just see if it works. Okay. Now I want to present Rick Hill. Are you reading your own or someone else's? Uh, my own. Yeah. Oh, we're going to read. You're going to recite a read. Recite. I'll just try to recite it from memory. He's going to uh, recite a poem from memory. Yeah, with with your indulgence. I, I composed this thing just like, just, it just came to me, um, like maybe 15 years ago. And uh, uh, Nancy and Anna and... Jordan and some others connected with this thing called the Teachers and Writers Collaborative. They used to be at 5 hyphen yeah. 7 Union Square, seventh floor, and the same floor as Amalgamated Bank. And they're a non they're a wonderful nonprofit that puts poets in kindergartens and stuff all around the city. And they, they have all these wonderful books you can get for writing and poetry. So uh, we had this competition, and so I did my thing, and then I came two weeks later. And nobody else, had, they'd all forgotten about it. So this is uh, my thing. Uh, um, it's on, on, on moral diction. Let's see if I can remember. What's it called? It's called on moral diction. On moral Yeah. So that was the assignment. We were all supposed to write this poem on, on moral diction. Uh, hey, moral? Hmm? So uh, this is by On Moral Diction by Rick Hill, and I'm, I'm, I've never published it, i never even recited it. This is the first time, premiere. <laughs> wow! Premiere. Uh, so exciting. Yes, the premiere. The necessary and sufficient Boysenberry coefficient eludes the listener's glistening sister, Andrew Moody, Mr. Twister. Give us more than mere sensation, idle thoughts, cohabitation. Take the whispers, hackneyed whispers, to the isthmus of Corinth. Behold the tripping, kicking Cornish wrestlers sucking down their Cornish hands. If moral fiction thrives on diction, driven by deep conviction, the lasting art frees from addiction, pedestrian's artifice, ephemera's quotidian, then moral fiction's cosmic diction loosens all the malediction, reeking razzle, dripping dazzle. Since she seeks Queequeg with his teak leg, let Zeke say, sever at the knee, fit finest ivory, scrimshawed in the rickshaw, the ship departs at three. <laughs> <laughs> Incidents from the life of my uncle Arlie by Edward Lear. Oh, Edward Lear, Uncle Arlie. Oh, my uncle Arlie, sitting on a heap of barley through the silent hours of night, close beside a leafy thicket. On his nose, there was a cricket. In his hat, a railway ticket, but his shoes were far too tight. Long ago, in youth, he squandered all his goods away and wandered to the tin scoop hills afar. There, on golden sunsets blazing, every evening saw him gazing, singing, Orb, you're quite amazing. How I wonder what you are. Like the ancient Medes and Persians, solely by his own exertions, he subsisted on those hills. How? By teaching children spelling, or at times by merely yelling, or at intervals by selling Proctor's Nicodemus pills. Later, in his morning rambles, he observed the moving brambles something square and white disclose. T'was a first-class railway ticket, but in stooping down to pick it off the ground, a pea-green cricket settled on my uncle's nose. <laughs> never, never more, oh, never did that cricket leave him ever, dawn or evening, day or night. 
Clinging is a constant treasure, singing in a cheeriest measure, solely for my uncle's pleasure, though his shoes were far too tight. Then for three and forty winters, till his shoes were torn to swim flinters, all those hills he wandered o'er, sometimes silent, sometimes yelling, till he came to Borley Melling, near that old ancestral dwelling where he never wandered more. On a little heap of barley died my aged Uncle Arley, and they buried him one night close beside the leafy thicket. There his hat and railway ticket. There his ever faithful cricket. But his shoes were far too tight. <laughs> <laughs> Living overseas and taking in the homeless sometimes. I've been living in an idea, an idea from another man's mind. Maybe I'm a fool to settle. For a place with some nice views, nice views. Maybe I should move and settle down. Two kids and a swimming pool. I'm not brave. Oh, love of my heart. 
heart. He said, I'll take the high road, you'll take the other. Oh, the brown and the yellow way, and we'll meet again by the ford of the river. Well, I waited by that ford for an hour and a quarter. Oh, the brown and the yellow whale. When next she came to me, twas without shame that I saw her. Oh, love of my heart. When she told me her story, I lay down and I died. Oh, the brown and the yellow whale. She sent two men for timber, she never even cried. Oh, love of my heart. Well, aboard of Alder and aboard of Holly. Oh, the brown and the yellow whale. And two sacks to wrap all about me. Oh, love of my heart. Well, if my own dear mother had never been a woman, oh, the brown and the yellow whale, there's many another song I could sing about women. Oh, love of my heart. Wow. Wow. What do we have on your mind? Right. 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 Killing time here. Six minutes. Right. Um, Six minutes. Six minutes. All right. Um, Baudelaire's Invitation to the Voyage. I'm going to do it quick. My child, my sister, dream, how sweet all things would seem were we in that kind land to live together. And their love slow and long, their love and die among those scenes that image you, that sumptuous weather. Gold, um, <coughs> soon would there be, <coughs> oh gosh, that sumptuous weather. <coughs> I've lost it. Go start some new things. Okay. <clears throat> my child, my sister, dream how sweet all things would seem were we in that kind land to live together. And their love slow and long, their love and die among those scenes that image you, that sumptuous weather. The suns that glimmer there through cloud disheveled air move me with such a mystery as appears within the other skies of your traitorous eyes as I behold them shining through their tears. There, there is nothing else but grace and measure, richness, quietness, and pleasure. Gold silver mirrors, <clears throat> um, furniture that, well, I'm sorry, I'm drunk. Furniture that wears the luster of the years, softly would glow within our glowing chambers. Flowers of rarest bloom proffering their perfume, mixed with the great fragrances of amber. Gold ceilings would there be, mirrors deep as the sea, the walls all in an eastern splendor hung, nothing but should address the soul's loneliness, speaking its sweet and silent native tongue. There, there is nothing else but grace and measure, richness, quietness, and pleasure. There in the still canals, <clears throat> hidden from the swells, those lazy ships that dream the sailing forth. It is to satisfy your least desire they ply hither through all the waters of the earth. The sun at close of day, close the fields of hay, then the canals, the last, the town entire, in hyacinth and gold. Slowly the land is rolled sleepward under a sea of gentle fire. There, there is nothing else but grace and measure, richness, quietness, and pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.
the white on the back. So the recycle order is like more pounds. That's enough. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wish you luck. What do you do? I, um, what do I do? I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> Going to Europe? Yeah, I live in Ireland. I live in Dublin. Yeah. Are you, you have a YouTube channel? Yeah. You do? Yeah. I have to say Happy New Year to Eleni. Happy New Year, Eleni. Happy New Year. And many of them. Yes, many of them. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year. I'm drunk. I, I mean, I'm drunk. drunk? Did you say? Yeah. I am. Yeah. I don't have my cup, right? How long have you been living here? Forty. Oh, a long time. Uh, I came here when I was ten. Oh, really? So that's half a century. Wow. Yeah. That's a lifetime? Yeah. Already a half a century. I'm already half a century. So. You're young. Yeah, I'm young. Actually, 50 is not that bad. Did you have a big to-do, a big affair? No, you know what I did? I did what I always do. I did laundry and graded papers. Oh, you're joking. I, no, I'm not. You didn't have a big affair, a big bash, a big do. No. Why? You just didn't feel like it. I just don't do that. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I, just, I thought you might, but I don't. No. Nope. No, that's something my sister might do. My brother-in-law, my brother did it. Uh -huh. Well, my brother didn't do it. Actually, my sister-in-law gave him a surprise party one month after his birthday. His birthday is February. Nice. That's nice. No, so my brother was mine. Was, yeah, oh, when's your birthday? Fourth February. Oh, the 11th. Yeah. yeah. You're an Aquarius like yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, that's just a surprise party. That doesn't surprise me. They're a great star. I think it's a great star sign. I think it's a great star sign. She was all her she had a half series of Oh wow. She just said she was No, I think she's Aquarians kind of are, but they're kind of balanced at the same time. That was a good part. I You're an early to bed person. I went to bed. No, not if I'm watching Bottom. <laughs> 2001 at Arsenal. That was hilarious. I was laughing my head off. I was watching the Operation Live. Oh my God. I typed in Bottom, Rick Mail. You really are an adult. Oh my God. I have like this period where I have like these binge watches. You are a former Soviet Union. I can remember them. Because they're yeah, something they about, they're brilliant. And they're completely wacky. They're like completely wacky. No, it's a very cathartic. Because that's so. It's very good. 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 It's very you, you like to have a touch? No, I like to have a touch because the hairspray does that. Then when I went out of the rain, doing errands from Minerva. I'm 39. How long is this going to make it? I don't know. Bye, guys. Is anyone like it? Bye, guys. Ha, ha, ha.
That's the joy of YouTube. You can get so much cool stuff on it, you know. But the, the only thing is the hours go by, don't they? When you're watching it. Sometimes I sit up to... Do you? That's what you do? Yep. And then you up the next day and... Five gold man in Dorset. Oh, that's another student. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. I forgot about that. They were very good. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Can I get you? No. Good. So we could pour water all over the place. Oh no, we're gonna have a pole. Yeah, right. <laughs> That'd be great. It's raining down. It's there. raining down. It's, it's raining. raining. I doubt it. We're still gonna come in here. We're gonna find ourselves looking up at the model saying, "Gee, where is the model? Why is the model so high up?" Or as Robert Sebastiano likes to say. Minerva, I didn't know we had cathedral ceilings. Cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cake? Party cake. <laughs> No, 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 